Greetings one and all and welcome to Dina James blog volume 6. I know it's volume 6 because I wrote it down. Yeah, isn't that clever of me? You know, because I'm a writer and I write stuff down. Yeah, anyway, never mind. <laughs> Hi, uh, welcome to another edition. Um, I, I know I'm a kind of a geek and so I went back and I looked at um, when I generally vlog and I generally vlog around, you know, mid-month, once a month or so and so I'm slightly bit late this month, but hey, I've been a little busy. Um, if you've been reading my texty blog, you'll, uh, or my Twitter, however else you want to keep up with me, uh, if you do, I'm assuming you do, because you're here, uh, you'll see that I've been kind of busy. I went out of town a couple of times this month, and, but now I'm back, and I'm working, uh, diligently on some projects, and, uh, I'm happy about that. Uh, what do I have for you today? Today, today. Lucky you. I have the cuppy warmer. Okay, it's it's kind of old and, and broken and stained and stuff, but uh, this is the cuppy warmer. It's a black cuppy warmer, and um, there's a little, you know, switch on the, the front there, and you turn it on. So if you, don't, ah, you would turn it on if you... Yay! Uh, it, it's not on now because I had to unplug it. <laughs> yeah, because I'm brilliant. Um, and then, you know, it's, it's, it's a cuppy warmer. See? Like, like this. Yay! Like, you needed to see that, you know, because you're not intelligent enough to figure that out for yourself. But either way, it's the world's best invention for a writer, a blogger, anybody else who sits at the laptop or the computer or in their office for days on end. <laughs> or, you know, hours on end anyway. But it's the coolest thing ever. It's the best thing ever. It keeps your tea warm, your coffee, if you drink it, your soup, what whatever is, you know, it's awesome. It is utterly awesome. They've adapted these now for candle warmers, you know, so you set those big candles on them and it warms the bottom and it makes the house smell without a flame. I've never used one, but I know some people who have, and, and I mean, come on, it's basically the same thing as a cubby warmer, um, but they call it a candle warmer. Either way, it's 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 a kind of a miniature hot plate, but it doesn't get hot enough to, you know, burn your apartment down. Uh, anyway, the cubby warmer. It's a cool thing. Buy one. Uh... What else do I have? I actually have notes written down so I can remember what to talk about. Lucky you. Um, and I totally forgot what I was going to say. Ah. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, first thing, I did the cuppy warmer. Um, oh, yes. Uh, and if you've been following my texty blog, you'll find that I've been blogging a little bit about how my characters are making me do stuff. Uh, yeah. I know this is kind of a problem with other people um, and their characters. It's really a... a it's really a, a, a phenomenon type thing. They actually make you do stuff. So whenever I'm out and about, one or more of my characters will point out things to me that they're interested in, such as one of my characters is a chef. And they're, you know, the kitchen aisle and kitchen appliances and various other ingredients that we could notice, we could do stuff with, uh, he ends up making me look at and or buy and or, you know, whatever. A recipe he sees somewhere, um, God, cooks.com is, is a nightmare for um, finding recipes. Uh, I was out at a restaurant um, a few weeks ago and, and I ordered quiche for breakfast and I got a huge long lecture in my head from my character about how I could make better quiche at home and, 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 you know, for less than half the cost of the, whatever, okay? Look, dude, I don't want to cook. I'm, I suck at it and I don't want to make this stuff anyway. I will go out and pay for quiche when I want it. Thank you. I don't want to make it at my house. But you don't argue with characters, especially when they're seven foot two and have a wingspan to match and they're, oh yeah, from the hell realm. So, yeah, anyway, you just do what they say. This is the, the quiche adventure, um, which I left out on the kitchen counter all night, so I had to throw it out, but it was damn good, and you should always listen to your characters when they tell you stuff. Um, another of my characters is into classic cars, so now anytime I'm out and about and I see something really cool, like a classic car, I get a lecture on what that car is and what it should have and blah, blah, and I don't even know this stuff, okay? I have no clue. I know more about an engine than any girl my age should, uh... I mean, yeah, my daddy was into cars, not not classic cars, but I mean, he was into, you know, repairing his cars. He taught me how to change the tire and my own oil and stuff, uh, which I think every person should know, female or not. I mean, if you're a driver, you should know at least the modicum of how to repair your car, which that's just my own personal thing. Um, but hey, that's why they make AAA. So, whatever. Uh, but now, when I'm out and I see a classic car, I took a friend car shopping the other day. 
and oh my god, my character was screaming in my head about what car to buy and what's this and what's that. And, and each of the car dealers had a classic on the lot and, 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 and I'm getting lectures about, you know, what car is what and what engine is what, V6 is this and, you know, cylinders and, and spark plugs and, and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, this is what happens when you have characters who are into certain things. And then I, like I said, I have a cook, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm not a cook. He's a chef. I have a chef for one of my characters, and he's very particular, obviously, about that. Uh, the guy in, who's into classic cars, uh, one of them is an artist, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. So you get all this stuff when you're out and about with characters screaming in your head about various, their various fetishes, let's call it. Yeah, I have fetish characters. <laughs> you go me. Anyway, that's just my rant on that. Um, what else? Uh, yeah. So I know too much about certain subjects that I have an absolutely no reason to know about uh, because of my characters. And they know a lot of stuff that I don't. Um, they just do. So go with, what, if, go with whatever your characters tell you to do, unless they tell you something, you know, evil, like jump off a bridge. Um, and even then they better have a dang good reason for it, and eh, whatever. It, just do what your characters say. Trust me, they know more than you do. I don't know how they do that, and I don't even know where it comes from, but they do. It's just, that's their way. Um. Speaking of uh, characters and all that stuff, writing and etc. Cetera, et cetera, Jackson Pierce has a great blog on uh, it's her bathing her cat blog. <laughs> it's awesome because uh, I I have four cats. Uh, I can explain. Don't I, I have four cats? Trust me, I can explain. Uh, and and one of them needs a bath quite frequently because she has never learned to bathe herself and gets quite stinky. So uh, I thought I found it rather amusing. And and what she has to say in her blog about um, I say um a lot, about ditching a manuscript that's not working, you know, th something that you put a lot of work in and, you know, something that's necessary, you, you have to write to, in order to improve and sometimes your, what you're writing isn't necessarily what you need to be racking, be writing or working on. Um, anyway, go to her blog, uh, it's Jackson Pierce and she's really awesome. I will try to link her, but I suck at the linky things, so, uh, either way, check her out. Uh, she's really awesome. I subscribe to her, so if you if you see this, you can go to my little subscribe daily, and um, and check out who I'm subscribed to, and you can you can check out her blog. It's really awesome. Um, the writing, the word count, and all that. I have, and you're gonna laugh. I have, for my own personal fun, the paper plate word count. Okay, this is a paper plate. It's an ordinary paper plate, and what you what I do. You don't have to do this, but what I do is I write my day's goal for the project I'm working on on the paper plate. Okay, this is what I needed for one project. This is my current. Uh, you probably can't see it on the back, but um, you can use both sides. You can use it repeatedly. You can, you know, you can cross this out. Yay! You can cross that out with a marker and use it again. And what I do is I have a little thing on my desk where I, I set this. So it's my paper plate word count. And I can just look right above my lappy and see the word count for the day. It's a paper plate. It's, you know, it's sturdy. It's, you know, it's not going to fall over. It, you can bash it, bang it around, and cross things out, write on it again. It holds marker really well, actually. So it's, that's the paper plate word count. Um, it's an awesome tool for me. Uh, it's probably not going to work for anybody else, but it, it does for me because I'm kind of anal or type A or whatever you want to call it about writing. I'm really particular and meticulous when it comes to my writing. And, and I mean, I even have spreadsheets <laughs> about, you know, my daily word count and what I did that day. And it's, it's actually one of the things I'm actually organized about. It's really kind of scary. So the paper plate word count, it's a fun toy. Um, Stephen King used to put his rejections on a, on a nail on the wall. And every, every writer's got their little, little, idiosyncrasy, their little quirk, and, and this is what I like to do, my paper plate um, word count. I started doing it uh, on a project I was working on, and, you know, it was a real kind of a, a gung-ho project where I had to get my word count for the day done, and, and I had a short amount of time to do it in. So the paper plate was actually, <laughs> I think it had a sandwich or something on it, <laughs> and I couldn't remember for the life of me the word count I was supposed to reach that day because I was so tired, um, and what I did is I was, I looked it up and then I wrote it down with a pen and stuck the paper plate where I could see it and lo, the paper plate word count was born. 